everybody this is Tina from Rehatch Designs hope you guys are doing well today I have a little bit of different format of a video I'm going to be trying uh, this out see how it works I'm going to be showing you a thrift haul and within that haul I'll show you a few things that I did flip uh, just for home decor in my home or for my booth and if you're new to my channel I do thrift flips I do uh, home decor all different styles uh, take things that you know are discarded or um, you know at the thrift store or even items from my own home and I make them over so that is what this video is going to be about except I'm adding uh, a thrift haul to it my other videos usually are just the actual flips themselves and I, I decided that I wanted to kind of add an extra video during the week, but I wanted to make it a little bit different format. So I hope you like it. Um, please give me a thumbs up, like, share, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel and you like the video, please do that. It does help out my new little channel and it helps me grow, but it also helps you. It helps YouTube know what you like. So first off, I bought these little candlesticks. One was $2 and the other one was three dollars with 50 percent off this was eight dollars with 50 percent off so then i got it for four dollars it's i guess a little hanging thing with picture frame and a little shelf i got these two trays they were one was three dollars and one was two dollars and i got them for 50 percent off these little buckets here um i got a actually quite a few of them i'm just showing you three and they were a dollar a piece and they're very very sturdy these are two little planters each one of these was two dollars so then i got them 50 percent off so a dollar each uh this was like six something like 6.99 i believe and again 50 percent off this was uh four dollars with 50 percent off so i got two dollars I believe this was $5, 50% off, so I got it for $2.50. This uh, was $3. It was originally black, and I've already painted it with chalk paint, so it was 50% off. This one was $5, and I got it for 50% off, so I got it for $2.50. I believe these were $6 for both of them, and so I got them for $3.00. Again, um, one of these was two dollars and one was a buck fifty. So let's start with project number one. And this was in my haul and it's in the picture originally, but I didn't show it to you because I'm showing it to you now. And I got it for um 50% off $6.99 and I painted it with Rust Oleum. I did two coats of the Rust Oleum clear coat because it's so dark. Um, I figured it would probably bleed through and what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be painting this with some chalk paint and i'm going to be using a drop cloth by dixie bell and i'm scraping off the uh, back of the uh, thing it had some little sticker feet on it like felt feet but it only had three and I cleaned this whole thing with uh, Dawn dish soap and then I went over it with alcohol and um, I thought I got everything off of it but there must have been something on there because when I started to paint it you could see that there was a resist like there'd been some sort of oil or something on it you can see it where see where it's not sticking but eventually I ended up doing a total of two and a half coats on this, which I actually think is really good going over such a dark uh, wood color. But again, I did do two coats with the uh, Rust-Oleum clear mat um, before I even started. So that does help. And I just painted right over that tile. It is, um, it's not, it's like the whole tile is covered with these palm tree things and so it was just easier to paint over it and i needed it to be white for what we're going to do next anyway but i just went right in there with my brush and uh, painted 
you know, inside of that little gap area there you see near the tile. I mean, these just look like tiles that you would put, you know, in your, um, in your home. This piece is really heavy. It's very well constructed. And when you add the tiles, it's pretty heavy. So I paint the inside also uh, because, you know, I want it to look good and match and everything. So now I'm painting the top. And again, it took, uh, you know, two coats, three or really two and a half. I mean, just touch up. And if you notice on top, there's this little screw uh, on there. And the thing is, it goes through the bottom, but it's, I don't know how it's put on there, but it is not, you can't get to it. There's no way to undo it. And there was a little screw on top or a little knob on there, but it was broken. And it just so happened in my stash, I do have another one to put on there. So now I'm using some uh, decoupage paper from Roy Cycled, and it is absolutely beautiful. I use it all the time. Um, it, I'm taking a wet paintbrush, and I am paint, I'm basically cutting out uh, pieces that are the size of those tiles. And now I'm going to take my matte polyacrylic, and I'm gonna use it to uh, decoupage that onto those tiles. So I put it on there and then I'm just gonna put some over it. And I'm also, um, as I'm doing that, I am putting polyacrylic on the entire piece. That's part of the reason why I use the polyacrylic uh, to put it down with, so I could just get both things done at the same time. So I'm just putting each one on there and I wanted that kind of raggedy edge because uh, those tiles are those like tumbled tiles, you know, that you buy. And so they're not perfectly um, square either. And I figured it would go better with that. And I'm just going over it with my finger, getting out wrinkles. If there's a few wrinkles in there, I'm, I'm good with that. I, I like the character of that. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do that and go over my entire piece, the inside also with polyacrylic and also the top. I will go over it with polyacrylic uh, just to have a base coat down uh, for the next uh, step that we'll be doing on this. But I think these look really, really good on there. I have used this pattern before and I do not remember what it is. I will try and link that in the description box if I can find it. Uh, they're still selling it. I see it out there. I don't think it's retired. And there's two sizes to these roses. There's a larger size and the smaller size. I tend to, this is the smaller one. I tend to uh, use the smaller one more. And I have two things in my booth that had that on there and they sold right away. So apparently it's very popular. But anyway, I go over the top, go over the inside, make sure I get everything covered really well. And this does dry matte. It's just a matte polycrylic. And now I'm going to be uh, doing um, some molds. And I will link that uh, what I use uh, for my quick uh, resin. And I'm actually, I bought another brand also. I haven't used it yet, and I'll let you know how it goes. But the one that I just showed you, that stuff works really, really well. So you, it's a 50-50 ratio. You put 50, uh, per, you know, half part A, half part B. Then you mix it until it's clear. And um, as soon as it gets clear, you don't want to over mix it, and you don't want to sit there and keep mixing, because it'll start to set up really, really quick. And you want to make sure that you uh, just do it till it's clear. And then um, you just pour it in your molds. And these IOD molds, they do great with this. And I'm using the Olive Crust, the Rosettes, and the Laurel Mold. And I'm actually casting a few extra pieces. I just about always do that whenever 
Um, I, I do castings just because I don't measure perfectly, you know, on how much I need. And I usually have a little extra. So I just, I have like a whole little box just full of things that I've already cast that I use. And it comes in very, very handy uh, when you're, you know, doing a project and you want to get something real quick. And I mean, this is quick. Uh, I do have it speeded up, but you'll see it start to turn white and it's, um, it just, it, it does uh, get hard pretty, pretty darn quick. So, and I have a little extra there. I should have actually put that in a smaller uh, uh, mold because it doesn't really fit in there. And if I'd have put it in a smaller one, it would have fit perfectly. So I end up having to trim that later, but I'm not using that on this project. So in uh, 10 minutes, you literally just pop those out. And that's what I love about them. You just can get right to your project. But I have found um, some quicker, quick fast, quick casting uh, resin that is um, a little bit cheaper than the amazing casting. Well, actually probably quite a bit cheaper. And uh, I use it actually more now. So anyway, I'm, these are the ones I think I'm going to use on the project. And of course, I have the extras too. And so what I'm doing now is I am just painting them with, uh, with a, the same drop cloth by Dixie Bell. And then after I do that, I did go over them with the polycrylic and... Uh, let that dry and then I'm taking um, Van Dyke Brown by Paint Couture and I'm going over each of the pieces and wiping back a lot of it but I do want it to go into the little crevices and everything and highlight them I want kind of a vintage look to this if, if you don't like that kind of a look you definitely could skip that part but I'm doing that on all of the pieces So now I'm taking that um, same Paint Couture Van Dyke Brown and I'm going over my entire piece, the rest of it, uh, pretty much putting it on and then wiping it off. I even go on the, in between that tile, that white portion in there and uh, take my paintbrush and go in there. And I even put it on top of where I uh, decoupage. So now I'm doing the top piece as well, putting it on, wiping it off. And now what you see me doing is I am painting and going through the same process I did with the other pieces uh, with this crown that is from the Laurel Mold because I like it better than the label from the Olive Crest. And then I am taking my Gorilla Super Glue and I am going to use it to uh, glue these castings on and I'm just putting a few drops on the back. This stuff works really quick uh, it, It's great if you are doing a project and you want to be able to move on and not worry about things moving around on you It's great to have this It's perfect for this situation And I am just taking a few drops putting them on the back and then I'm you know centering them and putting it on each of these little square tiles it doesn't take much. I just put a few drops on there. And I, it will stay forever. It's not coming off after. Well, I guess you could pry it off, but it'd be hard. 
and that crown just looks so much better the only thing that was going on with that label from the olive crest it was so big that it basically um was going from end to end on that tile and it just looked it just looked a little bit too big for the for for this for the tile square so i go and i do that on all of those and i think that looks so much better and i love how it looks and it is dry pretty much when you put it on there so you have like a couple seconds to move stuff around but not long and also too if you are um putting a casting down and it's not lying completely flat you can heat up your casting with your uh heat gun or your blow dryer and it will be a little bit more pliable and with that super glue um, you can make it you know a little bit bendable and then let you know hold it down like I'm doing there and that'll get it nice and flat to your piece so that's something to think about if you're um, doing something like this and you're in that situation so anyway, um, I put a new knob on there, as you can tell. I was lucky enough to have one in my stash that fit on that screw. And now what I'm doing is I am taking a rub and buff vintage gold, and I am going over all the casting, the raised portions of it. And I'm just using my finger as a paintbrush. I find when I'm using rub and buff that it works better than a paintbrush. But later you'll see me using a paintbrush to go in the inside area near the tile because my finger wouldn't fit in there. But for the most part, I use my finger as a paintbrush. So there's our finished project. I think this thing turned out amazing. I, I love it. I absolutely love it. It's just, I don't know. It's a, like I said, it's a very heavy piece. I wouldn't, I don't know if you would call it a jewelry box or a keepsake box, but I love it. So now we're on to project two, three, and four. Basically, it's these three galvanized uh, buckets that I got and they are super heavy duty very good quality and I am going to be using um, some transfers on that and I'm going to be using uh, ephemeral melange but I actually look at the uh, seed catalog too but I end up I'm using pieces from ephemeral melange because they were a little bit smaller. I think uh, for the most part, the ephemeral melange and the seed catalog have similar styles in there, but the uh, ephemeral melange has some smaller pieces. So basically on your transfer, you just cut it out what you want to use. You leave the plastic sheet on there. You take the backing off, you stick it down, 
and uh, you just rub it on until it transfers over. You use a little transfer stick and you can kind of tell when it's going to stick. You'll see uh, that top sheet kind of get a little bit opaque and you can see it releasing and I always start in the corner when I'm trying to release it uh, and then if it's not all the way stuck down that way I can put it back down and then you burnish it with the shiny side of that plastic to make sure everything's down and so I'm basically going to do that times three and uh, where I'm just going to cut these pieces to fit and go through the process of putting them all down. So now what I'm doing is I'm showing you a stencil that I'm going to be using and it is by Craft Treat. It is called French Labels. I will link that in the description box. I bought it from Amazon if I can find it. Sometimes some of these things I've had for a really long time so they no longer offer them but if I can't find it I'll try and put something similar out there but it's a French Label CTS460. So I always uh, put uh, tape on a curved surface when I'm using um, a stencil just to kind of hold it down. I don't rely on my hands. And I am using just some plain old black chalk paint that I got from the Dollar Tree and a stencil brush that I've had forever. And I'm showing you this because it was a mistake. It turned out really bad. It bled. I didn't like the color. So I just wiped it off. And I think it's important that as crafters, everyone knows we do all the editing. And, um, you know, there's a lot of things that don't work <laughs> that we edit out. But I try and keep some in. Anyway, what I'm doing now is I am using DIY's Old School and I am mixing it with some, um, with some uh, salt wash to make a mixture to put on there. Old School is like a very dark gray. I really like using dark gray uh, rather than black on something I'm trying to make vintage. And I'm putting uh, the salt wash in there to give it some texture and make it thicker. Um, it'll go on better if I do it with that and I, I, I make it a you know pretty pretty thick texture so if you're ever doing stencils and you have trouble with bleeding um, you can always put some sort of texture additive in there baking soda or whatever additive you might have and that does help so basically I am going to use this um, to stencil
and I'm just trying to get it on there you know centered in there and I'm using those two paint containers to keep things from rolling around I've got to make me some of those uh, things I see people using you know filled with rice or whatever like beanbag type things or a thing to set stuff in because I'm always seems like stenciling on something or trying to put something on it I wanted to roll it around so I'm using the stencil brush that falls apart later, but anyway, I still use it. And it turns out a lot better with this. And then I do it times three. I use the same stencil on all three uh, buckets. And I think it turns out really good. And I really, really love the gray. And I don't care if it's perfect because it's supposed to look old and time worn. But I don't want it, you know, bleeding all over. So I think it looks a lot better. And so now I'm going to do that times three. So now what you see me using is uh, my Rust Effects by Finnabar. It is a, uh, a simulated rust. You get three jars. You get a brown, kind of a burnt orange, and a mustard yellow. And it has texture to it. And I'm basically putting it in. I just use one brush and I blend them. I don't just put one color on top of each other. And I kind of blend it and I do it in little sections on little parts of where there might really be rust. And you could honestly get that same effect if you use salt wash and a mustard yellow and an orangey and a brown paint. Uh, but anyway, I'm using that. And now what I'm doing is I am taking some of my polycrylic that I had put uh, just some brown uh, paint in and mixed it up and made kind of a wash that has a little bit of a tint because I am going over all of my uh, stencil and my rust effects and also um, all of my uh, transfers and that will seal it all in and also give it kind of a more vintage look. And now what I'm showing you, I had done this on the other one, but I didn't show you. Uh, I uh, Before I did all of the sealing in and the rusting, I went and I uh, took my uh, finger sander and went over this with uh, sandpaper and just really, really roughed up that transfer to the point where the, uh, the uh, galvanized metal was showing through. I really did a job on the uh, edges because I figured I wanted this to look like an old uh, bucket that had been out in the garden for a really long time. And it, it doesn't look right to have this like new transfer or a label like if that was a label and, um, you know, it, to look completely new and perfect. So anyway, that's what I do. And I also do that to uh, my dried uh, portion that was stenciled on with chalk paint and if it takes some of the lettering off that's okay so now what I'm doing is I'm doing the rust effects on this and then after I do that I take some polycrylic that I have put a little bit of brown paint in and mixed it and you can do that with um, when you're mixing two water-based things together. If you have a top coat that's water-based and then you have a paint. And I didn't put much, but I'm doing it to make it kind of a wash uh, to put over that. And it also, the polycrylic is going to seal in my transfers. It's going to seal in my chalk paint that I did the stenciling. 
and it will also seal the uh, the rust effects in there as well. So here's my finished projects and I think they turned out great. It has a very uh, rusty, crusty, old bucket that's been out in the garden look. I know that's not everybody's thing. I do do it a lot. I, I, it sells well and if you look in any of the wholesale or stores, it is becoming um, super popular and it's very pricey to buy stuff like that. Uh, trust me, I've been looking and I, I know that it's not everybody's thing, but I definitely uh, like it myself. I love the character that it gives. So on to project number five, and this is our last project. So this is, I, I don't even know for sure what it is. But anyway, I got it half price, so what, $350? And it's some sort of a container. I think it's really cool. Uh, but anyway, it's metal, and it's kind of a uh, grayish, uh, you know, metal. And I usually pick any time I see a piece like that up, for, if it's a good price, just because... Those kind of things um, are pricey when you buy them new. So if you can find them at the thrift store, that's great. So what I'm going to be doing is I am taking Coffee Bean by Dixie Belle. It's a very, very dark brown. And I'm going to be mixing that with some salt wash. That's what I have in my container. And I'm going to mix that all up. And I am going to make basically uh, a very dark brown uh, texture uh Paste, which is very th this is what you would do if you wanted to do the rust effects and you wanted to make your own you know and not buy the the uh the finnabar uh, rust effects or in my case i'm doing this because i wouldn't want to take that little jar and do what i'm going to do with this because it would take the whole jar maybe times three to do what i'm going to do so I can have a similar effect and make it, you know, you could use brown paint, honestly, but using a chalk paint works well because it's a flat finish. So what I had done is I mixed it uh, and I decided I needed more, so I mixed extra. And now I'm going over my piece and I'm not going for perfect coverage here. I am trying to probably go 70% on this. Uh, we're going to have another layer that we do to this later. And I'm going for an effect. You know how you have that metal piece out in your yard and it gets all rusty and you decide I want to keep it another year and you decide to paint over it and, you know, it has those layers. That's kind of what I'm going for here. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of that um, in stores and in, on the wholesale sites. And as I said, they're, they, they are some of the more pricey items. So I'm, I'm going to do it, you know, for a whole lot cheaper. So anyway, uh, that's what I'm going to do. And it is a little tricky to get in all those little spots. I kind of concentrate on where the wire pieces come together because I think that's where you would naturally see rust. So I kind of glob it on on those sections. And of course, I'm going to continue to do all of this until... I'm done uh, getting it the way I want to, and then I'm going to go ahead and let it dry. But I go on the inside, uh, the handle, everywhere with this. So then after that, I have these uh, milk uh, glass containers that I bought on Amazon. I actually looked for vintage ones, and I couldn't really find what I needed or enough of what I needed. And they were very pricey. So I bought these and I will link that in the description box also. Um, and I am going to uh, be doing something to these containers. And I'm going to do that while I'm letting uh, the first part of this project dry. And what I'm showing you is I am using um, a transfer from Transfer Me. It's called Vintage Tech. And this is a water slide transfer. 
and it works differently than other transfers but uh, it should work pretty well on this uh, these bottles I like the size of these labels are nice and small of course you could use uh, a transfer from IOD or whatever uh, on these but I had these in my stash and I figured they were about the right size they're French uh, wording in there so I thought that would look cute on there so what you do is you take that plastic piece off that you saw me do you cut around it to size because whatever you leave on there that's what's going to be left there there isn't like it isn't like a transfer from iod where you know it's kind of cut you kind of have to cut around it and get it to where you want it and you spray it with water or you use uh, a sponge you wait a few minutes and then that white peat portion or the paper portion just slides off and because we are on a uh, slick surface, it is still movable and maybe it might be a little wrinkled or something uh, because it's a curved surface. So you have a little bit of time that you can kind of move it around and get it the way you want it. You can even burnish it if you want to. So again, I go through the same process. I'm going to do it on all six bottles. I'm just making sure it's down right. And once you put it down, it's kind of like any transfer because it's sticky. So you can't really pick it up after. And I'm just spraying it with quite a bit of water. Going it over with my fingers, make sure it's down nice and flat. And I'm going to spray it again. And basically, all you do is you're waiting for the water to soak through the paper. And then you find like a little end. Uh, sometimes it's a little hard. It's just a little harder because this is a slick surface. But if you're doing it on a porous surface, uh, it's super easy to do. And it comes off. And I do that on all six bottles and let them dry. And it, it'll be on there permanently. Now, you probably should seal these, but I did not do that because I don't like how um, sealer looks, you know, with glass. But they're on, they're good. They're not coming off. So now what I'm doing is I am using a Dixie Bell drop cloth. And I am going over my piece that we did uh, before with that textured paint. But I am only going for probably about 80%, maybe less coverage. I am deliberately missing spots because I want you to be able to see that texture underneath and the metal and the brown. And, you know, like I said, I want it to look like something that somebody had in their yard and they wanted to be able to use it again. <laughs> so they took some paint and they painted it left it back out there and now the paint's chipping off and that's the effect I'm trying to go for here and as I said and, and you do I am going on the inside and doing it too because I did that with the texture paint and I hope you can see the texture I don't think you can see it as well if it was in person but it's really a fun texture and I'm going to be doing this probably on other pieces with different colors um, and as I said, um, that whole rust effect that I did on those buckets, you could easily do that, um, doing the same kind of thing. So now I'm taking my little jars where uh, the transfers are completely dry. I'm putting them in there, and I'm deciding that they need something. Uh, they look a little bit plain to me. So I decide to take um, just some... Uh, twine that I have or string and I tie a bow around all of them at the top and now I'm just taking some different uh, greenery stems and I'm putting like one in each one I kind of envision this it'd be a great like plant starter that you could put out on your patio or something or your kitchen table and at the same time it would look good 
anyway that's kind of what i envisioned for this and that's why i'm putting different stems in there just like one each to make it look like a little plant starter so that's how this turned out i really really love it uh I think it turned out really cute. I wish the milk bottles had been just a little bit bigger, but I still think it looks really good together. It's a fun little project for something that didn't cost a whole lot. Um, the milk bottles were pricey. I think they were like $16, but you know, I think it was well worth it. It's super cute. And I think for the price, it's well worth it. So I hope you like my little flips for today and let me know if you like this format, if you want me to continue doing these. And I hope to see you again soon. And I really, really appreciate all of you that have hung in there with me. I know it's been a process. I'm trying to continually make my videos better. And you can certainly help me by letting me know what I can do. Uh, to do that and to make them more likable for you. Take care. We'll see you again next time.